You guys, when I tell you that this is my favorite book slash the best book that I have read in probably a decade, I'm not even exaggerating. Um, hi. Hello guys, we are back. Today we are talking about From Blood and Ash. Oh good God, I don't even know where to begin. We are talking about From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. You guys, I have wanted to read this book for months now. I have not been able to get on my TikTok without seeing a video that includes this as a re recommendation. Like I knew it was right up my alley. Everything about it, I think the title is stunning. I think the cover is stunning. Like. It is just completely my vibes, my trope, my genre. Like I knew I had to read this, but it was just on the list. It was in the queue. And finally, my friend ended up sending it to me from my wish list. And oh my God, she was not wrong when she said I had to read this and that I'd be obsessed with it. Every video on this channel is typically fully with spoilers. Um, the whole point of this channel for me is like, it's a place for me to come and decompress after reading a book, just get all my thoughts out there, just spew it out talk to somebody about it, that's somebody being you. But this is one of those cases where I loved this book so much that I want you to go read it. And I want anybody that is watching this or considering reading this to go read it. So I am not gonna give spoilers. I'm just gonna generally talk about this because this was, this was stunning. This to me was a perfect fantasy. I'm not gonna lie, whenever I started it, because if you guys watch my channel, you know that I just came from the Crave series, which, I love that series, but like it's, I, I like to call it trash, you know? It's it's trash that I can't stop reading. I, it's hard to put down, but like the writing of that is very juvenile. It's very, you know, it's not anything like insane. It's very simple to grasp. The dialogue is very just like straightforward. Going from that to this, the first 15 pages, I was like, whoa, kind of felt like I was in for, on information overload because it's a whole new world. It is a high fantasy, like it is a, kingdom, a land you've never heard of, like tons of people, tons of things to kind of absorb in the first 15 pages. So at first I was a little worried. I was like, this might be a lot. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this. That passes very quickly. If you start this and you're like concerned, trust me, like I, I am a person where a lot of that stuff, like too much information is in one ear, out the other. I can't do that. Like I need you to slowly feed it to me and it, it's perfect. It ends up being perfect. So this book essentially is about a girl named Penelope. She goes by Poppy and she lives in a, a kingdom where she is the maiden. She essentially is the chosen one. Um, she lives in a castle. She Her face is covered. She can't speak to anybody. So people in this kingdom are chosen to go through this ascension, um, which they're very vague about what that is. Nobody really knows, but she, her whole goal in life is like she is going to grow until she ascends and she's like going to save the kingdom. Like the whole kingdom is dependent on her ascending. You know, Poppy is very like hesitant. She doesn't really know what that means. She's lived her whole life very like guarded by the, this Duke and Duchess and they don't tell her anything. She's not allowed to speak. She's not allowed to step out of line. Um, her life is very like wham bam, thank you ma'am. But you know, she has a little rebellious streak in her. She sneaks out at night. She doesn't follow the rules. Um, she just wants to know, she wants more. She wants to, wants to live her life, but she, you know, feels bound by this duty. And basically you're kind of following her. So in the beginning of the book, she talks about, there was basically this massive war that happened many years ago that they call the War of the Two Kings. And it was their land versus the bad land, the bad people, the Atlanteans. The Atlanteans are essentially vampires. It's like this story's version of a vampire. They're responsible for creating these creatures, these monsters called cravens that like ravage the kingdom. It's horrible, horrific, and whatever. The Atlanteans are horrible people, but like we defeated them long ago and like they're not really to be worried about but they still have a prince that is called the Dark One and like there are people that still believe that he is like the rightful heir and he is the prince and people that believe that are called dissenters. So it's just like some general like background information. And in the beginning of this book, uh, Penelope slash Poppy needs a new guard. And so this boy Hawk ends up taking the place of her guard and he is, you know, tall, dark, and mysterious. And you know, tensions rise, things ensue, but there's just so much to this book. There's so much like 
you're just trying to figure out what's going on the whole book you don't know like I feel like I am a person that typically like I've read a lot of books I've watched a lot of movies I feel like I'm very good at like figuring things out like I typically guess things before they happen and with this book like the whole time I was just like on my toes I didn't know like I was so convinced I had things figured out and then I was like oh no oh no you have no idea I just I loved the characters in this book she made you love the characters she made you care about them one thing that typically happens for me which is kind of sad when it comes to like the female protagonists in fantasy books I either tend to not like them or just have no feelings about them a lot of times I feel like the female protagonists they try to almost like either make her like too overly like I'm an independent woman watch me go to the point that it's like cheesy and annoying or she just has like so little of a personality which I think that authors do that because they want you to be able to like almost step into that role which like of not gonna lie like every book I read of course like I'm the main character you know like people do that so I don't a lot of times I don't mind that if she's like doesn't have that much of a personality but like Poppy is literally my favorite female lead I've ever read in a book like I truly loved her she was independent without being like overly without talking about it like she was independent without her having to tell you every five minutes that she was independent and she didn't need no mans and like she was just a badass and she just like she she questioned things but she still felt like she was like bound to like serve her kingdom follow her duty do what she's supposed to do but you know, it's it's just, she was very normal. Like she had internal struggles. She questioned things, but you know, she, she wasn't gonna like shake up the status quo. Like she has to tread lightly. And like, she was just so smart. She was so strong. She was so brave. She was just, uh, she, her, her, her humor, her like, her little one liner, she was sassy, but she, I just loved her. I literally fell in love with her. She was incredible. Beautiful, amazing, talented, never been done before. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique, completely not ever been done before. That Lady Gaga meme is like my favorite. But yeah, Poppy was great. Hawk, oh my goodness. He had some quotes in this book that like I had to go back and highlight. Like some one-liners that were just like, oh, I mean ones that were funny, but ones that just like really made you think for a second and you're like, oh, you clever dog. Like, whoa like I their relationship everything about them I loved it I love this freaking book guys there are some plot twists in this that are absolutely insane I read this so quickly I literally it's like 700 pages I read it in about 48 hours like I did not put it freaking down I'm so excited to start the second book but if you're thinking about reading this at all read it it has every element of an amazing fantasy I mean it has world building but it's not like too hard to grasp I also find a lot of the times in like fantasy books that are where it's like a kingdom and like that kind of it almost has like a renaissance feel to it a lot of the times I find that like the writing is kind of hard to grasp like some of the language is hard to grasp this had that renaissance almost like old-timey feel but like the dialogue was just it was just normal it was so easy to understand without like being immature like it just it couldn't have been more perfect like it was a it was thought provoking, but it wasn't like I'm reading Shakespeare, you know, like it was just great. It was great. I'm obsessed with this book. I've heard the second one is even better. It's a kingdom of flesh and fire. I am starting that today. So my review on that should be coming very soon. That's going to have to be full spoilers at that point. I'm sure I'm just going to have to be like, blah, but yes, go read this book. It's incredible. I love these characters. I love this author. I'm going to read so many more of her things now. Amazing. So, to be warned, um, this is not a young adult. Um, there are some fairly explicit things in this book that I wouldn't recommend someone under the age of 18 to read. It's not like full-blown Fifty Shades or anything like that, but like, there are some moments and um, I'm not complaining about any of them. Sorry, mom and dad. Anyways, go read this book. I can't say it enough. That is it for now. I will talk to you guys once I finish book two. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see y'all later.